uh, Victoria, three weeks from today, three weeks from today, we will see the Carolina Panthers in uniform on a football field playing in a preseason game. I'm ready. Three weeks from today. I think. Hopefully. Maybe. I love them, but man, We're, they cause me like, so much pain. <laughs> I, they do. They, they, they do. So in honor of three weeks... Today, we're later on in the show, we're actually going to do three things of maybe kind of areas of concern offensively for the Panthers. There's three things of or three areas of concern defensively for Carolina as we approach training camp, which, by the way, rookies report tomorrow. Woo. Don't worry. We're going to do th- like th- three outlooks and we're going to do some other stuff about Carolina Panthers tomorrow as well. But three areas of concern for the Panthers defense going into training camp, Victoria. Number one, it's depth at corner. Depth at, at corner. J.C. Horn is a stud. We all know that. When he's healthy, yes. Bingo. There it is. <laughs> when he's healthy. When he is healthy. But once you get past that, Dane Jackson, whom the Carolina Panthers signed this offseason from Buffalo, has been an off and on starter in his career. But if Horn goes down, now you're asking him to cover other teams' number one. It's like, hey, go guard Mike Evans. Right. Go do that. Go guard Chris Olave. We saw what it was like guarding Mike Evans. Go guard uh, Drake Evans. London. Yeah, go guard Drake <laughs> London or whomever it is. Not good. Uh, it, it's, I, I don't think he's that. I don't, he's not that level. He's no. not. Now, if he's asked to guard another team's number two, fine. I'm okay with that. But that depth, ugh, it's mm-hmm. it's not there. Because then maybe you're asking Troy Hill, who's more of a slot corner, which I actually really love what Troy Hill did as a slot corner as the season progressed last year. I really did. Maybe you ask him to bump outside, which then maybe you're asking Shaw Smith Wade, your fifth round rookie, to step in and be a, a slot corner as your nickel, like right away as a rookie. If he's able to do that, if he's capable, then great. But you're asking a fifth round rookie to possibly now step in as well. Eh, big question marks. Now there's there's ways you can alleviate that. Stephon Gilmore is still floating around out there. You have Adore Jackson is still out there. Patrick Peterson is still out there. Now those guys are probably going to have options about where they want to go. And, you know, if there's guys that get injured during in training camps for other teams around the league, those teams might contact those guys I've just mentioned be like, hey, you know, guy just messed up his knee. We need a corner right now. Here's three million or two, whatever it is. Like, here's what we can pay you. Maybe that's the situation that those guys are looking for. Like, hey, I can go play for a contender possibly right now. But that's, I mean, that those are your options. That's it. Maybe DiCaprio Boodle steps up, which, by the way, DiCaprio Boodle has the best name in the Carolina Panthers. The best name. That's fun. It's a great name. I want to see, I want to hear Xavier say his name. Xavier Leggett. Oh, Leggett? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Say I just want to hear hey, Xavier s- say anything, really. Say his name and talk. he appears. <laughs> I, do, I believe in DiCaprio. All right, so that's number one. Number two, who's opposite of DiCaprio? of Davian Clowney as an edge rusher. Now, DJ Wadham signed a two-year contract at, I think it was $12.5 million total. DJ Wadham is still recovering from the quad injury. He had a partial quadriceps tear with the Minnesota Vikings towards the end of last season. It was right around Christmas, and he was still recovering and rehabbing during the offseason. That's the reason why he missed OTAs, because he's still rehabbing. He's still recovering. Now he was at the facility and at practices and those kinds of things, but rehabbing and training are two different things. Two vastly different things. It's one thing to be healthy enough to play. It's one. It's another thing to be fit enough to perform. So how long is it going to take for DJ Wanham to be ready? Does he start the year on the physically unable to perform list? Which potentially means that he cannot be on the roster at the start of the season. Every game's vital. So who's going to be opposite of Jadavian Clowney? We actually saw DJ Johnson, the third round pick from 2023, got hurt in training camp with a calf injury. Not during, I'm sorry, not during training camp, but during uh, mandatory mini camp, got hurt with a calf injury. Luckily, it wasn't a knee or an Achilles or something along those lines, but nonetheless, still recovering from an injury that was suffered not too long ago. Also, the major questions about what he's capable of doing. Kalevin Chason who the Panthers signed from the Jacksonville Jaguars one year, $5 million. He's a former first-round pick, but in his four seasons in Jacksonville, he had five total sacks. That's it. 
Now, by all accounts, by people from his camp that are saying that, hey, you know what? You know, he's uh, in his best shape. He's refocused and, you know, out there to, you know, to prove himself of what he's capable of doing. Okay, great. Let's see it. And then there's guys like Amari Barno. Amari Barno, I love him, like his physical skill set, but he's been mostly a special teams guy, former sixth round pick out of Virginia Tech. He's awesome on special teams. With his size and his speed, he's great. I love him what he does for that. But, again, once you get outside of uh, Jadavion Clowney, who's opposite? It's supposed to be, hopefully, DJ Wano, but you don't even know if he's going to be healthy enough to actually fully go. Which gets me to my third one, Victoria. Where does the playmaking come from from this defense? Good question. Where does the playmaking come from this defense? That's what I want to know. The Panthers last season had one strip sack. One strip sack the entire season. Not it good. came on the third play of the first game against the Atlanta Falcons down in Atlanta. It was Brian Burns. Sacked Desmond Ritter, forced the ball away. Ritter recovered the ball, but that's the only time all season that they had a strip sack. Yeah, and now we don't even one. have Burns. Now you don't even have him. Nope. Now one. They forced Merrick Crackley, which just as a defense, just th- forced three fumbles. That mm-hmm. was it. That one mm-hmm. that I just mentioned. I know they have one against the Houston Texans and, and, uh, that they won, and then I, if I correctly, there's like one other. But wait, where's the playmaking from defense coming from? Like some of the better guys that you had aren't even there anymore. It's not like you got a ton of interceptions. I know like Troy Hill had a garbage time interception against the Miami Dolphins. Sam Franklin had the great pick six against the Minnesota Vikings, that 99-yarder. But again, there isn't a whole lot of splash plays that came from the defense last year, and I don't know where those are going to be coming from this year. Maybe it's Derrick Brown. Maybe that's the next evolution of Derrick Brown as a a defensive lineman. He got the massive contract. Yes, he set a a record last season for tackles by an interior defensive lineman at over 100. He was around the football a lot, which is great. Now, again, maybe a chunk of those tackles came when other teams were just running the football late in games because they had leads on the Panthers and you're just trying to run clock. Protect the ball, run the clock. And Derrick Brown was around to make a lot of tackles, which is good. Only had two sacks last season. Do we see maybe and that number increase to four, five? Do we see more quarterback pressure, especially with a guy like Ashawn Robinson next to him? Does Ashawn Robinson maybe have a couple of forced fumbles during the season, a fumble recovery, maybe bats down a, or tips a pass at the line of scrimmage that Josie Jewell comes down with an interception. Those are things that I want to see more from the defense this season that they really didn't have last year. I want to see the elevation of, of more, first, more, tor- more, more turnovers forced, easy for me to say, but also red zone defense as well. Like their red zone defense last year was not very good. Their red zone defense was actually one of the bottom in the entire league in terms of touchdown percentage allowed. Yeah. So I want to see more playmaking from the defense this season. Where does that come from? A lot is going to look big different. Big question mark. I know. Now, part of it might be if J.C. Horn's healthy. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about shading safeties over to help you know Dane Jackson cover number one, which allows you to do other different from you know, other things, you don't have to worry about that. He can lock down that other receiver and allows Ezero Efro to do other things with the other 10 guys on the field. Maybe that's the key. Yeah. I just hate that we have to think of the plan B in case he's hurt again, especially go considering pl- that he just got that new contract. They were on plan B, C, D, and E, and F last year. I know, year. and that's why I'm like, I hope you guys know what you're doing with the contract. Like, I love J.C. Horn. I, I just want him. him to be healthy, and the fact that yes. that is such a big question mark, I'm like, okay, well, hope you got them plan Bs through H's, because <laughs> we're going to huh. need them, so 